Okay, so so Giannina is going to record this. So if your colleagues want to want to know what happened at this, uh, please uh, it'll be circulated or made available, and so uh, you can just point them to this uh, video recording. Uh, I'm hoping that this will be primarily a Q and A. So if you have questions, that you'll ask them. But I'm going to you know try to introduce a little you know uh, some elements of uh, this year's opportunity. And uh, just remind you of a few things, and then um, we'll uh, uh, take questions. And I'm going to be asking uh, Dan Goodman and and, uh, and Daniel to uh, Ken Goodman. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, Ken. Ken Goodman and uh, Daniel Messenger to uh, uh, provide a little context for uh, a couple of the themes that we're we're including this time. Uh, Eve has go ahead has gone ahead and put the the link in the chat box for uh, this year's grants opportunity. So uh, we do have two themes uh, this year. And, and like I said, Ken and, and, and Dan will talk a little bit more about those, those themes. But what I want to sort of underscore is the, you know, the philosophy of this grants program. And that is to uh, really bring, um, uh, you know, state of the art data science uh, into a particular disciplinary science. So we want to do something much, much more than, you know, you know, you have a big data set and you apply linear regression. That's not going to cut it. We want you to, um, you know, really introduce, uh, uh, you know, some machine learning algorithm that's going to help you explain something about your data that uh, you wouldn't be able to normally do. So it really does need to have some robust machine learning or artificial intelligence uh, components to it. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. And the other thing to keep in mind is the, the process, how we, how we do this. So you write a, a one-page letter of intent. Now, in that letter of intent, uh, you can talk a little bit about the data science you're going to do. You can talk a little bit about the science that you're going to do. What's at a really important part is of this grants program is to link a data scientist with the disciplinary scientist. So if you um, uh, don't know who to connect with uh, to do the data science applied to your discipline that you want to do, we'll find that person for you. And that person will be identified before you write the full proposal. So this LOI or letter of intent or pre-proposal is to make sure you have access to uh, a data scientist that can help you bring robust, you know, data science to the disciplinary uh, goals that you have. So if you have somebody in mind who's a data science expert, that's great, uh, all all good. But if you if you need one, we'll find one for you. Uh, so this year has um, a couple of themes: uh, computer ethics and data science, and diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice. Uh, those are the two main themes, but we're, we're open to other applications. So it's not, you know, if you, uh, you know, uh, if you have some other uh, disciplinary pursuits that you want to you wanna dig into, we will entertain those. We're just trying to encourage um, applications into computer ethics and data science, diversity, equity, and uh, and social inclusion and social justice. So uh, with that in mind, uh, before we open up the q and I just want to ask Ken to uh, uh, think about, you know, provide a little bit of context for uh, the first thing, which is uh, computer ethics and data science. So Ken, please. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> this is not, it's, it's, it's Ben and Ken somehow. I think that there's there's some sort of there's some sort of poetry in that. Thank you for that. Um, to, to, to first annotate one of your other points, though, Ben, um, everybody does science with data, and one of the things we found in the past is that people just sort of sent a lot of proposals that described the project that wasn't particularly innovative in the realm of data science. Um, there, I mean, if you're doing empirical work, you're probably collecting data. Uh, what we're looking for is something in in uh, in is, is, a, is a method in science that makes that makes use of data science 
that, that you haven't done before, or I mean, it just needs to be innovative in an absolute sense. But if, for example, in your field, no one has used a method, it could be machine learning, it could be, it could be any kind of novel way to do whatever it is you're doing. Uh, the reason, the reason why we, and, and the other point too that's worth making is we're trying to stimulate work in these two fields, namely ethics and information technology and data science, and attention to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, somebody that doesn't address those is not thereby excluded. It's just our attempt to try and focus some attention on these issues, given given that there are so many so many debates ongoing and and uh, about about appropriate use of of intelligent machines. And so we wanted to stimulate stimulate that interest on our campus. Uh, I don't know of a whole lot of opportunities like this at other institutions, uh, which is what makes this kind of exciting. Uh, also, doing good deeds in the world is a good thing to do, and we ought to do as many as possible. But that's not ethics. Uh, what we want to try and, 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 and make clear is we want to address and try and solve problems that arise. Could be in software engineering. I mean, one of the things that we do, uh, I think Ben, you know this, when we do the, the software carpentry workshops, uh, we talk about we talk about challenges related to annotation and version control, uh, documentation and provenance. Um, depending on your science, that might actually matter more than something else. We all borrow software from different, from different places. So, so thinking about those kinds of things, with the opportunity to talk to any of us offline as well. I mean, Kay Goodman at Miami.edu, uh, if anybody says, well, I'm not sure what you said, say it again and elaborate, we can do that. Um, and so with that, I think that I think uh, maybe I should pause. Maybe Dan had something to add. Sure. Um, thanks. Uh, who was it? Frank and and, and Dan. It's a, it's a catchy name that Dan name. Um, just to reiterate what Ken said. So and and I think Ben as well. That there are two areas that we're particularly interested in, but we're interested in a range of excellent data science proposals. And I am particularly interested in those um, that um, address uh, social behavior, behavior more generally, um, doing excellent data science. Thanks. One, one can make the point that the reason why a lack of diversity and a lack of inclusion um, and, and um, are, are, are bad is because they're wrong. Uh, I, I, you know, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. And so I might suggest that we, you're, it, that ethics supervenes on a lot of this. Injustice is wrong. And we live in a world where I think it's clear. By the way, are we allowed to say at the University of Miami that, that there's systematic racism? Or is it just the University of Florida they're not allowed to say that anymore? <laughs> Academic freedom, Ken, you say whatever you want. Well, we just calls them as we sees them, and the fact of the matter is, if 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 there's if there's a lack of fairness, uh, and a, then then that's not right uh, under most systems of of, of, uh, of moral reasoning. So, but the point is that that when they're redressing a wrong in the world is a good thing to do. We want, we're looking for innovative ways of doing that, though. That 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 might actually be suggestive, as opposed to we're we're going to recruit more more people from a from a from a vulnerable population, for example. Well, maybe we should be doing that anyway. Let's think about how data science in particular can advance that project. Okay. Are there any, uh, we, did, we did receive a couple of questions in, as, a, as an email. So as you're working up to ask questions, um, let me uh, address these uh, two questions that have come in. The first one is, um, uh, can you, if you got one of these uh, IDISC awards um, in a previous um, iteration, uh, can you get one this time, even for last year? And the answer is yes, as long as it's a different project. So we're not going to fund the same project twice. So if you submit a new proposal with a new project, yes, we'll, we'll certainly entertain it. Uh, another question that we received is, uh, can they use the, the 20K that uh, funds to uh, purchase um, uh, data storage at IDISC. And we have two kinds of, uh, two different kinds of data storage. Uh, and you can take a look at the description of those. They have different cost structures given the accessibility, you know, uh, high-speed disk or long-term storage. Uh, the website has all that information for you. 
uh, and Eve has put it into the uh, chat box if you need that. And the answer is yes. You can use it to buy access to IBIS uh, data storage uh, resources. But I want to underscore you can't use the 20K to buy a laptop for yourself or for you know, a graduate student or anything like that. So you can buy it to uh, basically lease data storage at IDIS, uh, but you can't use it to buy hardware to put on your desk or anything like that. So the money is typically used for salary, travel, or you can use it to uh, buy, buy uh, data storage, uh, rent data storage at IDIS. And of course, each award comes with 1 million service units to support your computational uh, needs. And uh, with that, you know, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask any questions that you might have. Um, uh, you can certainly put any questions that you might have in the chat box, uh, and we'll try to address them. Could someone use money to support student stipends? Yes, I think so. Yep. I have a question awesome. about the diversity piece. Um, so for example, in our case, we were planning to apply this, well, whatever proposal we were putting together. One of the things that we've observed is that, um, so we're talking about cancer here and the standard of care is designed pretty much based on data that unfortunately comes from Caucasian um, people, which is, you know, fairly common in, in genetics. Uh, studies, right? Um, and then one of the things that we've observed is that for certain ethnic groups, this doesn't work well and, you know, it doesn't work at all. So what we wanted to do is, you know, develop new methods to try and understand why this is like, if we can find like any characteristic in the tumors or things like that, that could like explain that and, and to ultimately like develop new treatments that will work for these groups. Um, so we were wondering if this falls under the diversity premise. Dan, I'm uh, looking to you to answer that question. I would say yes. I think it hits the nail on the head. I think you want to um, be emphasizing your data science. Uh, capacity and vision in doing so as well. Maybe mentioning, you know, the generalizability of the method or something. Including something that shows how well it worked. I mean, ultimately data science, remember, is sort of meta science. We do science all the time and we use science with data all the time, but data science itself is how data can improve science. And so finding out how well whatever it is you come up with work would be, would be, uh, would be interesting. And so Jen uh, Bosner has uh, put in the chat box a question. Can you expand on the IDIS partner requirements and parameters for selecting, identifying a partner? So uh, uh, anybody, you can choose as a partner, anybody at uh, uh, UM that's a data science expert. Um, and, that's, and that's fine, or you, pose your, you know, in your letter of intent, you say, we haven't identified a data science person for us, uh, for this project. And the uh, committee that evaluates uh, the pre-proposals will identify someone that has the skill mix to help you do your project. Now, when it comes time to actually writing the proposal, this individual is to give you guidance on how to include data science into the proposal, what techniques would be used, uh, what approach that we're not asking them to write the proposal, but to just give you really good advice on how to, you know, uh, refer to the data science that's going to be done. And they're going to help you, uh, they're going to be assigned to help you implement that, that project. Uh, so we make sure there's a good match in terms of the skill mix uh, of the people involved. Did I, hopefully I addressed your, your question. And if you want to iterate on it, please feel free to unmute and we can chat, chat about it. You know, if Jen were on the team here, it could be Jen, Ben, and Ken. Yeah. 
So hopefully that addressed your 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 question. And 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 as Ken said, you know, you can always email us. Uh, and you know, we do we do 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 this based on committee. We get we have a real good idea of what our the skill mix of the IDIS team is in terms of data science. We try to be very careful about identifying the partnerships that that will make the project project a success. Great. Thanks so much. That helped. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would go even a little deeper. If, if, if you identify a data scientist or if you are the data scientist, I think that the depth of the collaboration between what's sometimes called like the substantive investigator and the data science person, I think the deeper and more holistic it is, the more um, you, know, you guys can finish each other's paragraphs, if not sentences, the better. Or if you can't, that you've really gone through a couple of drafts, or it really makes sense cohesively. Yeah, so uh, I think I think Dan has a good point there in the in the sense that we really do want you to to interact with that data science in terms of how you're going to use data science in the in the proposed research. So we really want to. Uh, I think that's Dan's point is that there, it really should be a an iterative interaction. It's not just you throw something over the wall, they give an answer, and you're done and dusted. We're really trying to actually uh, develop a collaboration that could, you know, going forward, uh, attract external funding for a bigger project, really building on it. And so we're we're really trying to grow a, a, coll a collaborative effort. Uh, that that's worth underscoring. That 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 these are fun to do and useful and worthwhile. But ultimately, I think part of the institutional. The, oh, the overarching goal is this is these are we're seeding clouds here uh, and in hopes that they're going to rain one day for you and that that is good when when in the past we've seen people who basically taken other grants submitted elsewhere and with sometimes precious little modification just sent them in for this um, that's obvious that it was something that didn't work out so well elsewhere uh, uh, when when there's real attention to the you know the call for proposals uh, it, it, it also uh, is, is is better regarded. How are you addressing data science as opposed to what's your fabulous research project that didn't get funded elsewhere? Not that that's a bad thing and not that you should consider this for that. It's just that um, the, the one page proposal, we've had people submit some, some uh, specific games pages from other grants. Uh, and I say, well, it looks cool, but it, it should be a little more responsive to what we're trying to do here at the University of Miami. Okay. I suppose it's good that people don't have a lot of questions. Ah, here we go. Uh, Delia is asking, would you accept a project that includes AI digital twins with the ethics, ethics diversity fused as a final goal? Just want to be sure the project is not a too ambitious for the call. Dan, I'm gonna have to punt. Maybe you can help there. Um, yeah, maybe the question is too ambitious for the call. <laughs> um, it sounds great. Sounds great. And if you already, you know, if you already know that maybe it's a little too ambitious, you already know that you have to think, oh, maybe we should just do, um, with apologies to Ken, just, you know, this first specific aim and work on that, or maybe it actually does look better if it has all, however many there are, but, you know, we say very clearly that we understand that it's a big project. You know, this is just um, grants person show. Um, so I can't tell you off the bat if it is too ambitious. Also, because or, or make it not. Than I. Or either of them would be interesting. I mean, someone who wanted to use digital twin technology in a novel way, that could be interesting. Whether, whether you also included uh, diversity, equity, inclusion might, might be a, a separate project. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not that much money. Uh, and so it's, I mean, anything that's ambitious is generally good, but, but it might be perfectly acceptable to pick one or the other as well. Do you agree? Um, yes, I think that. So we have a question. Uh, if the PI is at UM, could we bring in an external collaborator? So uh, a couple of parameters here. One, uh, none of the 20K dollars 
can be redirected out of the University of Miami. That has to stay at the University of Miami. So it has to be a student, postdoc, your own summer salary. You can use it for travel for a University of Miami uh, uh, staff, faculty, student. So that's, that's fine, but you can't uh, redirect the money uh, to uh, an external collaborator. The uh, data science collaborator should be someone at UM. And like I said, we can identify that person, person for you. That being said, there's no reason whatsoever you can't bring external collaborators to the project. More the merrier. We'd love to have them. It's just we can't uh, we can't pay them for their time. I think I actually muted myself. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Um, this is Cecilia. I'm at the Rosenfield School and I am at the Marine Jewish Science School. So with that, and my research definitely needs a data science component to it. But in order to fall into the purview of maybe like uh, social justice, I work a lot on coastal erosion, although that's not like the main outcome of the analysis. If that is a component, just like someone mentioned, um, should that be in the one page proposal as well, or should I kind of stick more to the very scientific aspect of my research questions? So if it's, if, if you're shoehorning yourself, you know, my, this is my personal opinion. So you're going to have to make that call yourself, but my personal, when I try to twist myself in knots to try to fit the, you know, some specific themes that are emerging uh, that don't make sense, it's usually uh, weakens the proposal. So, um, like I said, you know, we have those two themes. So we're trying to, you know, uh, alert people to those directions that we want. But, you know, a, just a pure science coastal erosion proposal will definitely get full consideration. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. The current round of funding included some engineering projects involving concrete, if you remember. Right. Uh, and and they were they were they were really interesting projects that were off a, a, a click or two, which was fine. Yeah, yeah, that was more like and, my question: if there was like historical precedence for being kind of far removed from the proposal call. Yeah, <laughs> so thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sure. Can just for my curiosity, Jeannie might know how many how many people here are from Rasmus, how many from Gables, and how many from medical? Do you know offhand, Jeannie? No, it, we would have to go on the registration list, but but not right now. <laughs> one of the things that was nice is that we got uh, we, we've gotten proposals from all three UM campuses, uh, and that's that's been. There's not a lot of opportunity for that. And, and I thought, I think I think my colleagues would agree, that's cool when that happens. Yeah, and I do know we have 28 people on the call, which is pretty good. We had 31 in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Was it something I said? <laughs> Digital twin. Yeah. All right, uh, any other questions? Uh, as uh, uh, you should feel free, like we said, to either uh, email uh, Ken Goodman or Daniel Messinger or myself if you have, have any uh, questions. You can also email your questions to idisgrants at miami.edu. Eve forwards them to us and we try to address them as quickly as possible. Um, uh, so please feel, feel free to ask any questions. Any, you know, even if you feel like you want to have a, you know, a, a more, you know, one-on-one -on -one chat, we're happy to, uh, to try to accommodate that too. I, I think uh, more. there's one more a, question. Yeah. To, yeah. Andy. Yeah, sorry. I, I didn't mean to wait until the very end to, to come up with this question. Um, and maybe you got addressed already. Uh, can somebody be on more than one proposal? Uh, 
I think you're going to have to pick. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to have to pick. We're unlikely to, uh, you can, let me put it this way. You can go ahead and submit to, nothing wrong with that, but chances are pretty slim that both I'm are going to get two at once. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, although I think that there, I think there have been data scientists, at least I just data scientists. That that's, that's it. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. Exactly. We, we often have to assign uh, more than one data scientist. Uh, I mean, a, a data scientist to two proposals. That has happened. But the PI or the lead um, is probably just one. That's a good ben, question. I think. I think Meryl was going to ask a question because I saw her unmute and then mute again. I don't know. Okay. I'm happy to wait a minute. Uh, my question was answered, actually. Thanks. Good. All right. You know, the usual long pauses and <laughs> big zoom things they're always uncomfortable uh if there are no more questions uh going once going twice sold uh, <laughs> so feel free to reach out if you have any issues um otherwise good luck with your pre-proposal thank you all and have a good uh labor day weekend Take Thank care, you. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.